Well, hello, and thank you for tuning in again to another episode of the Finish More Music podcast. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about multitasking. Now, if your initial reaction to that is, oh my days, this sounds terribly boring, or I've heard about it before, or, you know, multitasking bad, staying focused on one thing good, I got to tell you that when I started to look into this and uncover the impact that this has on creativity and on all areas of our lives, I was pretty much shocked. It runs so much deeper than I imagined. And as a creative, this is something that I wholly recommend that you stay laser focused on and act on it if you're experiencing any of the things that I'm about to explain that I've uncovered with the research that I've done on this particular topic. So, At the top of things here, I think it's fair to say that we all want to maximise our creative output. Nobody wants to put more time in and have less to show for themselves as a result. One of the things that is going to lead to that above a great many other uh, errors, mistakes and things that we may be doing as creatives is multitasking. And this really is the illusion that you are getting more done when actually you are debilitating your mental capacity in terms of your intelligence, your memory, your creative problem solving, All of the things that go into writing a piece of music and developing yourself as an artist. It's a big deal. The overall punchline of this is if you focus on single tasks until completion, you're going to be more productive and you'll be more likely to operate in a flow state. And the flow state is obviously that amazing sort of peak performance where we get lost in what we're doing. We tend to be our most productive, it's the most fun and enjoyable, and typically our best work comes through. However, if you do multitask, whether it's habitual or whether it's something that you're trying to do with your music production, you will get far less done, you'll be less creative, and therefore you'll finish less music, and what you do finish will be at a lower quality. So pretty damn negative impacts. Let me give you some examples of what I'm talking about, just so we can be really, really clear. Let's say you're working on a single piece of music and you are in the middle of the arrangement and you say, you know what, I think this track could do with some incidental effects, you know, like one shots, these kind of things. You know what, I'm going to design my own. And you're like, well, I'm not too sure that the synth I've got has got that capability. So we're off downloading a synth. So now we're doing something different. And then whilst we get that all set up, we listen back to the loop and we go, well, you know what? The kick drums don't sound meaty enough, so I'm going to stick a saturator on, which we try, find out we're not that great at it. So then we start Googling a tutorial. We're jumping on YouTube to find out how to do that. Meanwhile, we know somebody who's got the synth or maybe we're in a community and we're like, oh, I'm trying to do this you know, can you help? So whilst we're waiting for them to get back to us, we're trying to do something else. And ultimately, what's going on here is that we keep jumping to do different things that are all in service of trying to finish the piece of music. So don't get me wrong, there's still phones that could be going off and all other distractions. But let's say you've annihilated all that. Everyone knows that's my studio time, my phone's on silent. You know, you're not getting distracted with things that aren't in service of finishing the track. Everything you're doing is in is in service of finishing the track, but you're just jumping from one thing to the next. That's multitasking. So if I unpack that in a way that wouldn't be multitasking, mid-arrangement, Decide, okay, I want to get good at adding incidental effects and designing them. That's not for now. That's something I can do outside of my writing time. If I want to pick up a synth and learn how to do that and build a library of presets or bounce them down to audio so they're ready for a track, that's something that lives over there. That's in this room. I'm staying focused on the arrangement. Ah, kick drum saturator thing. That's mixed down. That will be focused on at the time that I'm doing the mix down and we just stay focused on the one thing we keep the main thing the main thing in that moment which would be arrangement and we're not saying we're not going to do the other things they just live at the right times that they should live intentionally rather than jumping from one thing to the next 
and give you another example of this which i see quite a lot which is people bouncing from track to track so i've seen systems that people teach on this as well where they say okay you're going to So I'll give you another example of this as well, which I see a lot, which is people jumping from track to track. So they'll say, OK, I'm going to write a bunch of ideas. Maybe it's a bunch of loops and then I'll pick the best loop to move forward with. So they write a bunch of these and then they say, OK, well, I'll move this forward and then I'll write some more ideas and I'll maybe move something else forward. So now I've got a bunch of ideas, a couple of things that have been moved forward a bit. Then I'll pick one of those and I'll start arranging it. But the arrangement gets hard. So I'll create some more ideas and they end up jumping from track to track and idea to idea at various different stages of completion with four, five, six tracks maybe going on, a multitude of ideas littering their hard drive. And... The, per the other person is saying, OK, maybe I'll make some ideas. I'll pick one and I'll see that through to completion. Boom, 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 boom. One person ends up with all of these half finished ideas and maybe a couple of finished tracks at the end of X number of months. The other person has a bunch of finished ideas that they then put into a releasing machine and they've actually got their, their tracks out into the world. So one of these examples is just working on one track. The other one is working on getting more and more tracks finished like your creative journey in either incident both people are still focused on the job in hand just one of them is all over the place context switching from one thing to another so you might identify with this and one of those things might have gone oh god blimey or both of them or many of them oh my gosh you know i i do that and this is easy done this really is easy done. We can we do it in a lot of different facets of our life and it can be really challenging to resolve, particularly if you are a habitual multitasker. So a good quote for you here for your notes. How you do anything is how you do everything. How you do anything is how you do everything. So if habitually you multitask and you refocus on new things in your work, in personal projects that you might be doing, in the studio, you're going to find that it will instantly start to bleed into every single area of your life. So this is something to be mindful of, not just in the studio, but holistically in absolutely everything you do. And as I mentioned, this doesn't have to be a poorly designed environment. And by that, I mean, you've got your phone next to you and it keeps going off and you're you're looking at that. You keep checking Facebook. Did somebody come back to me? And I would tend to think of social media because it is the ultimate attention drain. It kills our attention like pretty much nothing ever has done i think in history but let's even put all of that aside if you're just someone who keeps context switching in one area of your life you're going to find it showing up elsewhere now this becomes particularly challenging because science has shown a whole bunch of things that go wrong when we do this so strap yourself in for this the first one that you've probably heard is it slows you down and absolutely it does. This is what psychologists call a task switching cost because there is an increased mental demand that is associated with jumping from one thing to another. So effectively, it drains your bandwidth. And this also is encouraging what they call bad brain habits. So when you complete a tiny task, which could be sending an email, answering a text message, posting a tweet, any of those things, you get hit with the the, uh, the now very famous dopamine, right, which is a reward hormone. And because our brains love dopamine, we're encouraged to keep switching between the small tasks that give us instant gratification rather than focusing on on a bigger task so if we think oh the arrangement is a bit of a struggle big task i'll just design these incidental effects feels easier right just download that synth even easier oh, i'll just stick a saturator on there easy i'm not sure i'll just watch a tutorial easier we start to jump to those things more readily and we train our brain to do it so it becomes this cycle that we we get stuck in habitually 
Now, when we think of this, how you do anything is how you do everything, and it leading to different impacts in our life. Figure this out, right? The sum is more than its individual parts here, quite considerably. Because let's say you slow down at work because you're multitasking and a project gets on top of you, you need to stay late. So then you go home and now you had planned on spending some time with your better half and you planned on going in the studio. So I'm just going to go in the studio for a bit and you start multitasking and that drags on. You end up not spending any time whatsoever with your partner. Now, I don't have to tell you, you give that a week, give that a couple of weeks, you're going to have a problem in your relationship, which is then going to impact your music, which is then going to impact your work. And so this situation where we get slow and tasks start mounting up and mounting up, basically the plates, the various plates that we have to keep spinning in our lives start to drop and it's always going to come back into the studio. If we keep the podcast focused on creativity, it's always going to come back in the studio. Always. So this is a big deal that touches all areas of our life and this slowing down due to multitasking, is going to spread out and it's going to be habitual. Now get this, here's some of the things you might not know. Multitasking lowers your IQ. I'll say that again, it lowers your IQ, scientifically proven. So a study that they carried out, University of London, found that participants who multitasked during cognitive tasks experienced IQ score declines that were similar to what they'd expect if they'd smoked marijuana or stayed up all night. Now, if you're someone who smokes marijuana and stays up all night multitasking in the studio, I'd say you're probably in big trouble, right? But if you're just someone who multitasks, they found it could lead to IQ drops of 15 points. And in some of the men who took part in this, it lowered their scores to the average range of an eight-year-old child. So imagine that. How are you going to be getting on with some of the complex stuff you're trying to do as a creative when now your IQ shooting down as well. And depending on what you do for work, just consider that for a moment as well, how that could be impacting you at work. They also discovered it weakens your memory. So why is this a big deal? Well, the best music producers write the best music. So that comes down to the skills and the learning and the things that you pick up. The things that you learn by doing, the things that you learn by going out and consuming courses, tutorials, content. Well, learning to learn something means that you've memorized it and it's become a part of who you are. It doesn't mean you watched it or you saw it or you consumed it. We all know the amount of stuff that we watch and we forget. But memory loss and absent absent mindedness, easy for you to say. They found they're really, really common among people who are multitaskers on a regular basis. And that's because your brain is not designed to handle too many tasks at the same time. So when you juggle in between multiple different activities, you're not actually paying proper attention to any one of them. And where attention goes, energy flows, right? So whatever you are doing or learning, you are less likely to be able to recollect, re collect it later because you haven't been paying proper attention to it. So short-term memory loss is a regular phenomenon, but they also say that it can damage your permanent memory as well. So another thing to think on, you want to learn, you want to grow, you'll be impeding that. And then the final thing, and there's more, believe me, but I I don't want to labour this point any more than necessary I think it's scary enough as it is is that it does kill your creativity and the reason for that is that a lot of what we do as creatives is problem solve so when you're writing a piece of music it may be okay how do I convey this emotion or this feeling or this intention in the piece of music I don't feel it's doing it at the moment so how am I gonna breach that gap or perhaps it's something technical so well, in the arrangement, the 
maybe I'm coming out of the breakdown, the drop isn't hitting as hard as I want, or maybe parts of the piece of music feel that they're disjointed in some way, or perhaps it's a sonic problem. This, this is too muddy, or this isn't punchy enough, or there's not the clarity there. There's a whole multitude of problems that we're consistently solving in the act of creating pretty much anything. Music production, I've mentioned this multiple times. In my opinion, and from what I've seen, is probably the most challenge, most challenging, sorry, of all the creative disciplines because of the scope of it and all the hats that you're wearing as an electronic music producer, all the different things you're expected to do and the unlimited possibilities of sounds and samples and gear and software and all of those things, as well as the writing, recording, conceiving of ideas, composition, arrangement, mix down, the full piece, all of the hats that we wear. So there are lots and lots of uh, different things that we're doing. And if you are concentrating on one particular problem at a time, then you've got the brain power to resolve it. But when we're multitasking, whilst you might well be able to, to go, oh, I'm doing this, now I'm doing this, now I'm on this track, now I'm on that, now I'm doing this, you're going to really struggle with the problems that require serious concentration and that is because your brain is habituated to shifting tasks it's no longer able to stay focused on any one thing even when you're trying to do it with full concentration so it slows you down it lowers your iq it weakens your memory it kills your creativity definitely something worth paying attention to i would uh, suggest right so how do we do it? What are some of the things that we can do to overcome this? Well, we all know, you know, outside of even thinking about the, the multitasking piece, we know the issues that social, social media are bringing in with our ability to focus and pay attention. So externally, even from the multitasking piece, which is, as I mentioned, focusing on trying to get something done, but jumping between the different tasks and ways of doing it, the overall distraction culture that we have with social media will affect your ability to fix the multitasking issue. So being really mindful of that and cutting out the stuff that you know is just a chronic waste of time. One of the things that we do inside of FMM is we actually have a course. So when people join our community is in a Facebook group, but we have a course that teaches people how to use Facebook whilst avoiding all of the other bump from the rubbish on Facebook. And it is highly effective because I don't look at anything else on social media other than the content that I'm interested in. I'm a part of a couple of other groups. Masterminds have spoken before about uh, the amount I'm dedicated to investing in myself and how important I see that being in anyone's development path as a human being. So if there are other groups, I'm only focused on them and what's going on inside at FMM. I don't look at timelines. I don't get distracted with adverts ever. Not ever. It is entirely possible to do it, to be able to take the most from what is valuable to you and not get caught up in all the nonsense elsewhere. So first thing I'd say is be mindful of that. And if you don't have a strategy for how to use social media, I recommend building one. The second thing is the old classic mindfulness and meditation just 10 minutes a day i won't go into all the science on this but my gosh you know they they do the brain scans they prove this and everyone i've ever spoken to who consistently meditates for just 10 minutes a day i've spoken about his life-changing benefits being focused and present on any task is the key to being more productive and when you are able to be aware of what's happening which is what will uh, one of the superpowers that mindfulness and meditation can bring into the rest of your life you'll notice hang on a minute i was gonna task switch there i'll park that for later i'll just scribble it down and then i'll get back so you can scribble things down and all of a sudden it, it takes that out of your mind trying to play with it and wrestle with it it's like no it's not that i'm not gonna do this i'm just parking it until later just scribbling it down and mindfulness will help massively with that. So scribbling stuff down, getting your social media game, your strategy uh, sorted, and then something inside of the studio or with your work, anything you're doing, 
is rather than multitasking is to break things down into timed chunks so if you are someone who likes a bit of variety but you don't want to you know jump around like a, a mad person as a result of it be very intentional about the the time chunks and still keep things in a nice corridor so that you're not going crazy pomodoro technique is amazing for this as well in fact i recommend this whether you want to stay completely focused on point for you know for five hours or whether you're someone who's like you know what a couple of hours over here and then a couple of overs out hours over there on something else keeps my energy levels up either way the pomodoro technique is amazing won't go into it in huge detail but in short it's typically like 25 minutes let's say blast of intentional focus on a single thing five minute break repeat 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 four cycles in take a longer break like 30 minutes you play with the optimal timing on this and it's great because not only are you focused on singular tasks, it also helps protect your bandwidth. It doesn't exhaust you. So you stay sharper. Tiredness makes cowards of us all. Another great uh, note for you. Tiredness makes cowards of us all, which is to say we won't have the courage to stay focused on the more difficult task. So preserving your bandwidth with something like the Pomodoro technique and its intentionality is fantastic and it also when you read up on it has systems for monitoring external distractions so if your environment isn't optimal as well it's going to help you to pick up on those things so there are a bunch of ways that i've found to be really effective to help with this and i think just you know acknowledging this it gave me a real jolt i had literally no idea about the memory stuff the iq stuff i hadn't considered the impact on creativity per se knowing all of that and how much time i spend creating every day has really sort of shook me up a bit put it like that and maybe it has you too you can definitely fix it but if it's habitual and it's across all areas of your life it's going to be you know, it's going to take a bit of energy for you to get started and some intentionality. But think of it like this. How much value are you going to take from it? What return on investment will you get for blocking out an hour to really think about the things that I've discussed here and look at how you can 80-20 this? What are the 20% of things I could do to stop 80% of my multitasking? Really, really powerful. So in summary, if you manage to focus on single tasks, you're going to become more productive. You're going to get into that flow state more. You'll finish more music and better music versus trying to multitask, whether it's intentional or habitually. Um, and then ending up getting far less done, being less creative, finishing less music, finishing less quality music, progressing less as an artist because your skills aren't being maximized, being less able to resolve creative problems. My gosh, it's a it's a hell of a, a weight to have on you if you're um, if you're falling into the multitasking trap. So my final summary on that is really just to consider how valuable your time is. You only get one shot at this life. So it strikes me that bringing these things into your awareness and spending some time on resolving it, surely it's worthy of your consideration and your attention. You let me know. You be the judge. Do hit me up on Instagram at I am Keith Mills. Hit me up with a DM. Is this something you've struggled with? Have you got any effective strategies that I can share with people? If you have, think about that. It might take you what? One minute to type a quick DM to let me know. But imagine the impact that you could have hours, days, weeks, even the chance of someone fulfilling their goals or not with a strategy that you've picked up at some point. So do let me know. Show notes, finishmoremusic.com forward slash 161. I hope you enjoyed the show. Do stay safe. Until next time, happy music making. Music.